Today it's all about importing PDF into MuseScore and I have picked a PDF that's a bit heavy. I created this uh, jazz combo piece a long time ago and I think I wrote it through Sibelius which is interesting because that didn't last long. Anyway, I picked that because one, we're going to see how the PDF import does. It's a score, uh, so it's a bit heavy in a different font and with drums and all that. I have used MuseScore PDF import quite significantly, uh, mainly for vocals and piano. It does a good job and it's improved a lot. But I'm just going to say this right up front a PDF it's gonna scan it as good as the PDF is. So sometimes if you have an old PDF with a lot of pencil markings and whatnot, it might not go well. Uh, I also use another program called Sound Slice, which I might talk a little bit about, which I think does a, a bit better job, but that's kind of another video, but I'm gonna show it quickly uh, near the end of the video if you're interested. So the first thing is you open up MuseScore and you have to have a MuseScore account and you don't have to have a pro account and it doesn't change the quality of the scanning. So after you open up MuseScore, you might see this. And then after that, you're gonna go to file, I believe, yep. And then you're just gonna click import PDF and then Chrome will uh, bring you or whatever browser you use, it Chrome will bring you and you'll have to sign in and then you have to just drag and drop and upload your score. Let's see. So import PDF, and this is what it looks like. Um, I have my account open already, but also it will say you can take a finale to MuseScore. It has that now. I have one right now processing, and it takes some time. So depending on the file. And there is a 30 megabyte limit, which is pretty heavy. Uh, so you might have to do it in stages, depending on what you're up to. I haven't done this, by the way, with like a lot of orchestra or um, concert band stuff, but it's improved over the years. It can be a, almost a quick fix, but uh, I don't know. It, it's a hate-love relationship, but it's definitely a must at times. All right, so I want to show you the score that I'm going to import. And I'm not worried about the beginning. Um, I'll open it up so you guys can see it. This is way back when. I'm not worried about this. We'll see what happens. I don't care about the program notes. I'm just interested in the notes. So we're going to explore uh, what's happened. It's a transpose score. And we're going to go ahead and really make sure that some of the text and the hairpins are in there as well as the drums. And then we'll see what the rehearsal marks look like and this font. Um, so I don't know if you can see this area. That's, that could create a little collision because that eighth rest and a flat. So this will be fun to try. And um, I don't know, the lyric should be fine, uh, but I'm definitely gonna be pushing it to the limit. Uh, oh yeah, it'll be fun to see the drums in this. One thing about drums, uh, I have a big background with percussion and drums can be really tricky. And I read a while ago that with drums, if you have a, uh, like um, if you did something on Notion uh, that's owned by uh, PreSonus Studio One, every software has kind of a different code for drums. And just because you have an XML import, it doesn't mean it's gonna play nice. So sometimes a PDF will go better. Some people say you just have to do it from scratch. I wouldn't necessarily do that because some instruments will be fine. I would just, do what you can do with the XML assistance. And then also, then you might have to punch in the drums. That's a side note, but that will also happen if you're doing some pretty intense PDF import. So this is the score. So I'll show you a few pages. We'll compare and contrast. I'll show you the process. I'm feeling pretty confident. Um, I use this for educational reasons. I might buy something from Music Notes, by the way, and then I might change it because I'm a teacher but I would never rip off music. And I just wanted to say that because I think the industries <laughs> are tough already. Um, so just support people. I always buy the music, but if I need to create something for a flute player or something, I might move stuff around um, if, if I can't buy it. And usually it's like, you know, four or five bucks. All right, so I am gonna check the score and see if it's ready, and then that will open up the Muse score. If you're an older user or you've been using Muse score for a while, like me, there was a different way of doing this. So that might confuse some of you, especially if you did Muse score uh, two and three, and that was you go to another software, and I can't pronounce the name, but it starts with an A. It's A U. Um, sorry, but uh, just being upfront there, that was a different way of doing it. But now you use the plugin that they have through Muse score, and I'm bringing that up because some of you. Might 
might get confused like, okay, so now I have the PDF, they want me to publish it? No, I need this PDF to get to ViewScore. So when you have an account, um, you just click on that and you'll see this. And then when you have an account, you can download it. So uh, there's a few things I'm seeing that's incorrect. And this is what you'll probably see when you open up MuseScore. It was in 4-4 time, not cut, but I had a different font. And I, I'm, re I'm really impressed. I'll give this, I don't know, 7 out of 10, maybe, or 8 out of 10. I'm shocked that the vocals didn't come out, but maybe I shouldn't be because I used a jazz font and I did it in landscape mode. So that's a horizontal format. Um, but the dynamics are there and the drums are there. So right now off the bat, there's some collision issues with dynamics and vocal stuff. Personally, I'd rather take that and redo it versus um, all the drums because there are drum fills written in and all that. All right, so we're going to download it to MuseScore. And when you download the MuseScore, you might get like you're verified as a human or the file's corrupt. And I'm not sure why this is beyond my pay grade, but I think it has to do something to do with the scanning. Um, like right now it's, let's see, okay. So I'm gonna open this up. I'm gonna double click on it. So that time I said fine. I'm not getting any error messages, it's loading up. All right, yeah, it's saying it's corrupt. This file contains errors that could cause MuseScore Studio to malfunction. I'm thinking because it's a scan. I'm thinking that there's collisions, um, but we're gonna open it anyway. We're in a safe place, everybody. All right, in mind later. Um, okay, bye bye. So this is what it looks like now in Portrait, which is great. The piano's there, um, and you could change it to the jazz font if you wanted to. The only thing you might have to do is figure out the time signature, look at dynamics, and then um, like hear Harmon mute. So now I'm gonna pull through the the vocal part's a mess, uh, but that's okay. You know, I mean a lot of it's there. All right, so now there's some issues in this part of the score. Um, there's some di so the hair the hairpins didn't all go through, um, but the drum is like, wow, that's interesting. I mean, the drums are there, take her, uh, but I have a surprise. I use uh, Sound Slice, SoundSlice.com. You can do a free account. I'm not like. <laughs> in the ends with anyone. Uh, so I'm not getting uh, endorsed by anything, but I do use SoundCloud, not uh, sorry, Sound Slice, and I'd pay five bucks a month because I get more opportunity as far as importing files, which I need to do, especially at the beginning of my school year. Um, so there is a flute part in here. This looks really good. So the notes are great. We're having some articulation issues and some dynamics. So there will be some upkeep with this. Uh, but let's go to sound uh, slice and I wanna do the same thing. I wanted to show you that uh, cause I use that more often. So I've already imported and I just did a few pages. So after it's done, I get to pick and choose on what it's working and what's not working. So you see this is a double bar line. What kind of symbol is this? And the, we wanna say, yeah, that's a final bar line. It's actually um, double here, I believe. And then what symbol is this? General text, lyric, so that's cool. I'm gonna put lyric. So this is a little more detailed. Um, this is a lyric, very good, and this is double continue. Sometimes, depending, I didn't do many pages to save everyone time. All right, so now they show you what they're seeing on the score and they wanna know what kind of note is that, which staff of the line, they have it there. No, only a beat, so I'm gonna click nope. All right, what's gonna happen? Um, we went through all the prompts. This is the most prompts I've gone through and I think it's because of the font, to be honest with you. Uh, what's gonna happen is I am gonna, it's gonna load up and then it's gonna show you like scanning softwares, the original and the scanning, as you can see. Um, so we got things lined up nicely. What I'm gonna do is just do an XML to the uh, MuseScore, because that's what I really wanna see. Uh, here they just left out harm and mute, Man, yeah, it happens. So we're gonna go to uh, continue and it'll ask you if you're happy with it or not, which is great because they want feedback. This is quite a workout, I tell you. Um, so now I want to do an XML. This also has notation um, editing uh, capabilities, which does a good job. I just don't use it um, because I have a lot of workflow with uh, 
Mu score. I almost said finale. All right, so now I'm going to export it as music XML. That it only gives us that as a option. So now I'm going to go to what I'm trying to do is so many things. You have XML. I'm going to do like what I've been doing for like 20 years. I take it and I just drop it into software and it'll load. It's kind of fast. You can import XML now. So, all right, remind me later. I'm very excited to see what's going on here. All right. All right, so that's a lot of work. And I'll tell you something right now. We got the 4.4, it got more of the articulations. It didn't get all the rest because I bypassed a lot of it. Um, it did a really good job. I'm curious about the lyrics. Sorry, no lyrics aren't good. The drum part, some of it's good, but showing a lot more voices. Sorry, Sound Slice. Um, and I like that software, I use it, I went through it quickly. But in this case, it looks like MuseScore took the win as far as importing stuff. I mean, it's a tie, you get, you got more hairpins. Um, but there's more work you have to do. Hey, listen, I hope you like this video. I, I gave more information than I was hoping. Uh, I love this stuff, but I'm, I am gonna try to monetize this channel, so if you like what I do, um, hit the like spot, hit the like button. Um, Jim, by the way, I've been an educator for a very long time, and if I didn't do this stuff, I don't know if I'd have a job. I have a concert in about a week, and I rebuilt all the parts, looking at the kids' levels, and they're sounding really good, and I'm grateful that I can do this and, and just grin and bear it. Uh, it's a lot of work. Uh, I've published a piano book and I'm not bragging. I've just been around for a while and I just thought I'd introduce myself at the end of the video because I forgot. And um, let me know if you have any questions. Hopefully this was helpful. I'm always learning something. Uh, so Sound Slice is awesome, but in this case, I do think, I didn't mean to do a battle. I think I would have gone with the Muse score. I would rather fix time signatures. Uh, so this was a heavy one. I did a jazz font, did uh, the format, I did the uh, landscape. So. Maybe I'll do this again with something a little more normal. All right, I gotta go. Take care. Bye-bye.